Hey guys, welcome back. If you stick around, I'll share everything you need to know to do a concrete slab on your own. All right, so the very first step you're gonna need to do before you dig up the ground, build the forms, buy the concrete, you need to first figure out how much you're gonna need, how much this is gonna cost, and what size of concrete slab you're gonna use. So once you've laid out sort of where you want the concrete to go and how big the slab is, just Google concrete calculator. You can easily find one of these free online. You put the four inches thick, that's the standard slab size for regular patios and slabs, and then whatever dimensions you have. This will give you a list of how many yards it's gonna be if you order from a concrete company, how many bags you're gonna need if you order from Lowe's or Home Depot or pick up the bags yourself. This gives you everything you need to know. Now the next step you need to do is figure out if you're gonna buy the individual bags, mix it yourself, or order a concrete truck delivering it already mixed, ready to go. Now, if you're ordering the bags, I found that it's cheapest to buy the 60 pound bags. It's cheapest per pound than the 80 pound or 40 pound bags that you can buy. And if you buy the 60 pound bags, it ends up being about the same exact price as ordering a concrete truck. Now there's an exception to this because most concrete companies will charge a small load charge depending on how much you order. For example, my concrete company that I was gonna go through has a limit of four yards. Anything below that, they tack on an extra $100 per yard, which makes it much more expensive than the bag concrete. So I actually plan to make this a little bit larger than I originally wanted, just so then I could reach that four yard limit and order four yards so that I did not get penalized for the price. Now, another thing to keep in mind is when the concrete companies are open, ready to deliver. Now, apparently there's a concrete shortage where I live and the concrete companies cannot keep up with the demand. So they no longer deliver on Saturdays in order to cut that down. And I need to do this work on a Saturday. I don't wanna to have to take off work just to do this. So I actually had to buy the bags individually, mix them myself, even though I already planned it to be four yards so I could get a concrete company to deliver it here. Now, next you need to start preparing the area where the concrete slabs are going. So a trick that I use to make sure I'm grading it the right way, everything's leaning away from the house so that you're planning for drainage, is to put up strings along the perimeter of your concrete slab. Then you can easily take a level and run it on those strings to make sure that it's tipping away from the house, away from your doorways so that when it rains, water will drain away from the house and you won't have an issue with puddles building up. Now in larger slabs and things like driveways, I find it is also helpful to run strings across the slab diagonal from opposite corners and have it crisscross to the middle. That will also give you a sense of where it's tipping if you put a level on that. Now, as far as elevation drop goes, I typically do one inch every six to 10 feet. It really depends on how fast you want that water to drain off of the slab. One inch every 10 feet is plenty for most rainwater to drain off and not have any issues. Now, once you have the strings in place, everything is lined up where you want it to go. Now you can start digging out where the slab needs to go down. Make sure it's four inches below the string mark all the way around. Next, you're gonna be needing to build the forms. And to do this a really easy way, if you're making your slabs four inches thick, is to use two by fours as the forms. Now these are really rugged, they will support the weight of the concrete and not bow out. You're also gonna be wanting to cut stakes about 16 inches to two feet, and those will be hammered down into the ground. They're gonna be supporting the form, holding it all together. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is just cut a point off on one end so that hammers down into the ground a little bit easier. I'm using whatever scrap wood I have laying around, mostly two by fours and two by twos for those stakes. It works really well to use up scraps that you have laying around. If not, you can just buy two by fours as well for those stakes. Now, if you have your concrete slab running up to another slab already existing or your house, you may wanna put in sort of an expansion joint like I'm doing here. I'm just using half inch plywood. I'm using a cement nail gun to nail it to the house and hold it in place. And that's gonna be my guide on the back, making sure that both sides of the slab are where they need to be. This also gives room for the concrete to shift and uh, expand when it gets cold and keeps it from causing any damage.
Now, once you've built the forms, you can see now some places are lower than others and you need to fill some dirt in here. So I'm actually gonna be filling in a small layer of dirt in here and I'm gonna use a tamper to tamp this down. This will harden that soil a little bit and keep the concrete from settling and cracking. And I'm also gonna do the same thing with another layer of gravel. I'll come back with the tamper and tamp this down, try to compact this as much as possible. Another important step is to reinforce the concrete slabs that are gonna be supporting weight or vehicles are gonna be driven across. I'm gonna be using this wire mesh made specifically for concrete slabs. You could also use rebar or other forms of reinforcements. Now this does give a little bit more strength to the concrete slab, but more importantly, it will hold the slab together and stable, make sure that it doesn't separate if any cracks do happen. You also want to make sure that you backfill your forms. This will help support the forms from the weight of the concrete, but it'll also keep the concrete from rushing out underneath your form and blowing out. Now, in order to control cracking on larger slabs like this, you're going to want to add in expansion joints, either before you pour like I am here, or using a concrete saw and cutting controlled cracks across, dividing it up after it has hardened. Another tip, if you go around the outside of the forms and cut off all the stakes that are sticking above the forms before you start pouring, it's going to save you a lot of frustration and make it a lot easier. Now if you've decided to go with bag concrete instead of a concrete truck delivery, I've got a few tips for you to make it go a little bit smoother. First is having a cement mixer. If you're doing any more than probably 20 bags of concrete, you're going to want a cement mixer. It makes it go a lot faster. That way it doesn't harden before you have a chance to smooth it out and get all the bags mixed. Also, it's going to make it go a lot faster and save a ton of work at the same time. So you can either find a cement mixer new buy that if you're going to be doing a ton of cement work or you can buy it used on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, somewhere like that. That's where I found mine for 75, or you can rent it per day for a smaller amount as well. Now the next tip is, depending on how much you get, you may wanna consider getting the bags of concrete delivered instead of picking them up at the store. It would have taken me at least eight or nine loads with my truck to bring it to the house for five full skids of concrete. And this way I didn't have to load it or unload it, saved a lot of work, and they only charged me $50 to have five skids delivered to my house. Now the next tip is if you do have someone available that could help you, at least get one other person there to help with this project. We're doing four yards and in my opinion, it's not possible for one person to do that many in one day. I have done almost two yards myself in one day and that just about killed me trying to keep up with it, making sure I got it all poured before it started setting up and hardening so I could smooth it out and get everything done. It was an all day thing. Having two people makes it go a lot faster Faster, and it makes pouring four yards of concrete bags possible. Now as I'm pouring any sections where we have the reinforcement wire mesh in the slab, I'm actually going through with a hook and I'm lifting this up and making sure it's in the center of the slab instead of all the way at the bottom. If it's at the bottom, it's not going to be strengthening the slab like it needs to. It could easily just break off if there's any stress. The center will give it the maximum strength and hold everything together.
Now the rest I'm just going to speed really quickly through the process of smoothing this out. I'm going to use a bowl float to smooth out the initial pass. I'm going to come back several times as this is starting to cure and dry up. I'm going to be smoothing out the top. Now I'm also going to be coming around with a magnesium trowel as well and smoothing out any sections where the bowl float did not reach. And I'm also going to be coming back with an edger as this starts to set up. I'm going to be edging around each of these concrete slabs and this makes it just really nice around the outside and gives a nice smooth edge around the whole slab. Now there's one more slab that we're pouring the same day as the rest. This one's coming off of the driveway in the front yard. I want to eventually connect the driveway with the garage and that slab I just poured in the back. But this is a start. I'm going to move my way down. In order to reach the four yard minimum, we had to add in this slab as well, which I was planning on already doing eventually. All right, so I'm just about finished up with these concrete slabs. I hope this was helpful for you. I was really focusing more on the preparation and how to plan and know what to expect with setting up a concrete pour like this, more so than just pouring the slab and finishing it. There's a lot of prep that goes into these slabs and I haven't seen many videos that cover that. So I was hoping that this would be helpful for someone. If it was, hit the like button down below and let me know in the comment section. Now this is two days later, the concrete has set up. It's still very green. I'm not gonna take the forms off. I'm walking on this very softly. I actually took off my shoes so I don't make any scuff marks in the surface of the concrete. It definitely is hard enough for it to support my weight, but I'm still gonna be very careful. I'm not actually gonna take the forms off until seven days after the pour. You can see here, it's already set up. The surface is hardening, but there's still a little bit of a discoloration that's actually gonna go away once it has fully cured and you won't even see that later on. Now it's been seven days, the concrete is definitely hard enough to start using it now, so I'm gonna take the forms off. This will continue to harden over time. You still wanna be careful, it's not at its max strength yet, but I'm gonna carefully take the forms off and take the stakes out. I'm gonna start using some of the dirt that I've dug out of here to fill in around the forms where I pulled those out and around the concrete slab. And now I need to come back in and seed and hay all of this. I'm going to show you what this looks like in a month from now and it looks so much nicer once I get the grass in here obviously. Now if you guys are interested in learning more about how to finish and pour the concrete slabs, I've got two other concrete slab videos that I've made. Those go into definitely more depth on how to pour and how to smooth it out and finish it. So if you guys are interested in those, I'll leave the link at the end of this video. All right, so this is one month later. The grass has come in really nicely. There's a few spots that red clay has stained the concrete slab. I've got a pressure washer. I'm planning on coming out here and spraying that off and cleaning it up soon, but it looks great, turned out really nice. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If it was helpful at all, let me know down in the comment section. Also, please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.